Okay. Should we get it going? Okay. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Oren Gold. I'm a member of Woodbury Jewish and uh, also part of the uh, CSS security team at the temple. Um, about a week ago, I had the honor of hearing Orly Tesler, uh, who is on the board of Israel Heart to Heart, uh, speak about her experience. And it hit me at that point how important this is for everybody. We're all looking for a way to support Israel. And one of, I think, besides the soldiers who are on the front lines, uh, there's the families that have been deeply affected and traumatized by the events uh, that's been unfolding. Um, and through WJC Cares, uh, I felt there was a way, not just for us to help, but also for our children to get involved as well. So I want you to listen carefully to what you're about to hear today. Take this message back to the children, to the Hebrew schools. Let's get organized. Let's help support these families, not just from a financial perspective, but also uh, just from a, just a support so they know that we're there, that we're there supporting our brothers and sisters. So with that, I'm going to introduce Eric Donner, who's a founder of Israel Heart to Heart, and um, we'll get the show. Let's get it going. Thank you, Oren, and uh, thank you everybody for today, for participating. Um, I, I just want to share a little bit about Israel Heart to Heart and um, where we are, where we came from. I'm going to introduce Orly Tesler, one of our board members in Israel. Um, but Israel Heart to Heart was, uh, was three co-founders, myself, Rabbi Chaim, we're both down here in South Florida, and Elroy Buknik, uh, who is in Israel. Elroy is a, uh, a husband, a father, a businessman, and a uh, lieutenant colonel is a reservist in the IDF. And I know Elroy very well. We founded Israel Heart to Heart three years ago, um, and our mission is to help Israeli combat veterans with PTSD. And there's many, many, many of them out there that have it, many of them that have it, have been suffering, and uh, we have all kinds of programs in Israel. Um, and just imagine now with the war, half of our soldiers have been called back up with PTSD and they're in the front lines and many of them are suffering, their families are suffering, they're down south, they saw the atrocities, they witnessed or they were part of it. So, um, you know, it's just really, really um, uh, so important what we're doing today. Um, we're gonna talk to Orly in a minute, but I, you know, so we're a grassroots organization and um, we have um, helped, I think so far, 35 soldiers in Israel, it's a one-year program in Israel. We take 20 soldiers at a time. Um, we right now, before the war, we had 35 soldiers uh, wanting to get in our program, and we only take 20. And we do all kinds of uh, therapeutic help uh, in Israel, uh, building a community for them so they feel good, helping them with their careers, helping them through yoga, helping them through a lot of things. And we started programs for the spouses in Israel, we have a full-time uh, executive director, Shmuel, uh, who I believe might be on the call. Um, but it, it's really a grassroots organization. And Orly and Elroy E and our team in Israel um, literally pivoted when uh, October 7th came around and the atrocities that occurred. And we're going to hear from Orly. I just want to um, kind of share my screen. I wanted to play a quick, this, this uh, video, this is our website, Mind, Body, Soul, Israel, Heart to Heart, Making a Difference. But if you might, just for one minute, this is really, we pivoted and we used our network in Israel to bring supplies much needed that reservists didn't have equipment to the front line. And uh, this is the result of that. So many years, so many foes. We faced each one as they arose. So raise a glass, we're standing strong. It's our fight song. They knock us down, we get back up. We will not drown, never stop. It's who we are, I'm at Light up the night, can you hear my call? Yeah, you 
Israel, House of Art, thank you very much for your donation. We really appreciate that. Uh, sending you a blessing. Amisrael Pai, thank you very much. Thank you for all the support. So um, it was just, we took our, our network in Israel and we were able to quickly activate it to get the needed supplies. Then for the first two weeks of the war, then we pivoted and through Orly Tesler and her amazing army family and network, um, we were able to pivot once again and really uh, identify families in need in Israel that were, you know, were and still are hurting. Uh, we have direct line to many families. We built a really amazing infrastructure there. And so we're helping them. Many of their suffering. We know uh, the atrocities. We've all heard. We've read about it. Um, but many of the families, uh, in addition to financial support, they need therapy, their children. I mean, we don't have to tell you uh, what the suffering. Some of our soldiers uh, are down in the lot. Uh, because they can't deal with it. So they're down where many of the families are now. Many of the hotels in Elat, all the hotels opened their doors for these families who lost everything. They have no money. Uh, they have no uh, house. Uh, they lost their family. And Israel heart to heart has pivoted. And um, with that in mind, I'm going to um, ask Orly um, to just share a little bit about uh, first her background. So. Orly, uh, like many of us, were born and raised in New York, actually Brooklyn, USA. Um, and over 30 years ago, Orly moved to uh, Israel, made Aliyah, and that married a, 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 a man, Aria, has four beautiful children. I'm going to let, I, I've been to her house. I know them all well, and, um, and, and they're on the front lines right now. So uh, with that, um, Orly, can you just uh, say hi to everybody and introduce yourself. So hi everyone. It's a little late here tonight and we've, the days and the nights are all combined together. I don't know there's, when is the day, when is night? We don't really sleep much, as you know. Um, I'll just share a little bit about myself for those who hear that I don't know. Um, so like Eric said, I was born in Brooklyn, and 30 years ago, I made Aliyah to Israel, meaning that I moved to Israel. Uh, my husband, Arya, he's from a kibbutz, and he served over 30 years in the IDF. Um, at the end, he, he uh, rising, up, uh, rising up in the ranks as a brigadier general. With that, um, we have four children uh, who I practically raised alone here because he was always, his, he was stationed in the Northern Command uh, in the tanks. And then as a, brigade, a brigadier general in charge of the whole Northern Command. Um, with that being said, uh, our four children all have served and are still serving in elite commando units. Um, my son, who's 31, married and with, with a baby, was called right away back to war and left his family and his little baby and went on that day, on October 7th. My youngest son, Yaniv, is in the elite commando Maglan, which is a very, very, um, as you know, probably watch Fauda. It's one of the units that um, are on that show in Fauda. And um, my daughter, Shira, was also a paratrooper instructor, also on the front lines, um, uh, teaching soldiers how to jump out of IDF airplanes. And my daughter, Lior, who actually got married to someone also in Maglan, and he is from Kibbutz Be'eri, which is the kibbutz that was hit the hardest um, on October 7th. So on the morning of October 7th, we were all together. This is a picture of the wedding, my daughter's wedding on Kibbutz Berry, where 
more than 112 people from the kibbutz were slaughtered on that day, many of who were with us on this day at the wedding. So it's very emotional for us. It all ends. Um, we raised our children to be in these units because we really have no choice. If it's not us, then who, who, who will it be? There are endless stories of heroism and sacrifices that I can share with you, but the one that I recall the most is um, that I'd like to share is one of um, one that my husband um, would share with me over the years, as he recalls himself sitting in a tank with his platoon, looking down on the kibbutzim from the north in the Golan Heights on the Lebanon border. And there is when he thought about his mother, who was a Holocaust survivor, and he promised himself that no people, no enemy, no country will ever hurt or destroy us again. He gave his best years defending the country, not only for his children, but for the future of Israel and the future generations. Um, for, and especially for those who never lived to see um, Israel, who never reached Israel because they were killed in Europe, in Auschwitz. Um, we always, the words never again were really um, deeply spoken about. And unfortunately on October 7th, on our holiday of Simchat Torah, when we were all at home, we were woke to blaring sirens, uh, 6.30 in the morning, sirens going off all over Israel with not even a doubt in mind. All of the children who were home woke up, grabbed a uniform, the pair of boots, their rifles, their guns, their M16s, and went straight to base. The ones who didn't have their equipment with them went to the base and from there, without knowing what what we were what we were in for, everybody just left the house. Within minutes, I was standing alone in in my house, and everyone was off to to this war that we had no idea would turn into such a. Thir it's thirty days today. Today's thirty days. Um, like I said, my daughter is from the kibbutz. My son-in-law is from the kibbutz, and they plan to live in the kibbutz. And all their dreams are shattered now, along with 1,400 people, Israeli citizens who were slaughtered on that day, and not to mention the hostages that we are endlessly trying to get back. Um, now we're a month later. Our boys, our husbands, our fathers have all been called up to war. And... We do have a tragic past. Israel is a tragic past. Sadly enough, in the past month, many Israelis have replaced their tattoos from the Holocaust, from Auschwitz, with the tattoo of 10-7-2023. These tattoos are marked on the, on the arms of many Israelis today. Um, I live in a community actually with seven of 1700 families, all of high ranking army, Mossad, secret service um, members of the community. And together we are doing amazing things. Um, on the day of October 7th, I couldn't move for a few days. I was numb. We didn't know what was going on. And after a few days, I asked some neighbors and friends to please come to my house and together we need to figure out how we can help our soldiers. Like we need to do something. So everyone came to my house, friends, neighbors, some high school kids, and we we put together something called a chamal. A chamal in Hebrew is a cheder milchama, which means a war room. This all took place in my house. From here, we ordered supplies for soldiers. We delivered supplies in the North and the South on all fronts. We were there, that's the, the video that Eric showed um, of the soldiers saying thank you. Um, we did not expect the, the 350,000 reservists were called up um, more than 100%. So Israel was not ready. The supplies weren't there. People were just in shock. We were not. We were not. We were unable to mourn our loss, but we had to fight this war. We have no time to mourn. So that is how this thing came about. 
And today we are we moved from my house to a warehouse because we received so much um, equipment and supplies that we needed to move to a bigger and a larger place. Um, we're taking care of families. There are displaced families. Amount the amounts are we, we uh, numbers that we can't imagine. So Orly, tell us. Um, uh, you talk about the war room. Uh, tell us about the um, the network that we've built in Israel that works from the war room and how we have helped and helping families and, and really trying to organize. So in the beginning, it was all with, with through connections. I mean, we ha I have the connections. We, we Like I said, we're a family of, of army, high-ranking army uh, people here, and we have lots of friends, and everyone was just helping each other. So we just, through our connections, just called everybody, ordered supplies where we were unable to, to reach even stores. We were able to get it. We were able to go into army bases, places that regular civilians were not able to go into. And after we, we first we were taking care of the soldiers because we needed to, they were going into war. So we couldn't, after when things got or, were more organized, we were able to focus on the families. And now our focus is on the families. These families have lost everything. They lost family members. Whole families have been, Whole okay. families have been, yeah. So, um, so we we um, just take a minute. We um, so Israel Heart to Heart using its network um, developed very quickly the Adopt a Family program. Um, you know, we went, we pivoted from the soldiers to the families. Now we're seeing that many of the soldiers' families are part of those other families. Um, so I'm going to uh, play a video of what we what we put together um and just you know and then you you can tell a few stories after that so it's very close to our hearts uh, you know and orly and and her whole family and team our team in israel it, it, it's just very very difficult all day every day uh, we're all talking we're on the phone with israel all morning every morning uh trying to organize so we just wanted to share uh this video uh, with everybody on the Adopt a Family program, if you'll bear with us.
So um, this is so important, as we know. And um, we started this program. We started the Adopt a Family program um, literally last week, or maybe a week and a half ago. Um, we, Orly and our network in Israel have identified many, many families um, very quickly. There's very large organizations raising hundreds of millions of dollars and all these donors, but none of these families have gotten any money and they're hurting. So that's where we said uh, for, for $5,000, uh, we can we can get, uh, we send $1,000 a month for five months at least to give them some dignity. And I talked to Orly about this. They're proud Jewish Israelis that, you know, it, it's very difficult for a kibbutznik or somebody to take handouts, um, but they are desperate. And so we said uh, for $5,000, adopt a, a family. Um, they get uh, $1,000 uh, a month for five months. It's something um, in literally no time, in literally a week and a half, uh, we've already uh, had 23, I believe it's 23 uh, families that have been adopted and uh, many more. And now we realize things are in flux over there. So everything's changing so quickly. So Orly, can you just share? And also now also we see uh, many of uh, the, the soldiers, our own soldiers um, have family. Orly has family down in the kibbutz. And so we're seeing that our soldiers need help with their families. So we're, we're, we're the adopt a, a family program and all of the support that Israel Heart to Heart is providing is, is just critical at this early juncture. Um, Orly, maybe you can share with us, you know, one or two stories. Uh, uh, you're there on the front line. So if you, you don't mind uh, of some of the families that that you've experienced. So before I talk about the families, I just want to say a few words about the, the pride and the strength that we have. Israel has amazing, amazing people. Um, I visited a family every day. We're visiting families. And I visited a mother who her son was um, a commander in the Sayeret Matkal. It's the elite reconnaissance unit. And um, somebody asked, so we were just sitting and somebody says, how are you doing? And she said, how are you feeling? And she said, I'm proud. I'm very, I, she just lost her son. She has six sons. Three of them are serving in the army right now. One was just killed. And she just said, I'm proud. And that to me was, I mean, you, you see the people and you see their, the way we're moving forward and nobody has time now to grieve. We will do that later, but right now we're at war. And to see Israelis, like you said, from the kibbutzim that are strong, suntan, barefoot, carefree, working in the fields, getting their hands dirty, and now they are left with nothing. Um, and not, not, and also the, the emotional, um, the emotional pain that everyone's going through. There's not a family that didn't lose someone, a child, either someone's kidnapped or they, they did it on purpose. They didn't kill, well, they killed some whole families, but most of them they tried to torture by killing one of the family members or beheading the other family member while they were watching. They just did horrible things. So with this, um, I'll tell a story about someone that I know, that we, we know. Um, he's from the kibbutz. And on that day, he was home and he himself, he's also 30 years old. He himself was in the first, in the first tunnel war in Tsukaitan and has post-trauma. He's a skinny, thin, like short kid, um, looks like he's 12. But on that day, he was awoken in the kibbutz and um, he understood very quickly what was going on. There were sirens all over and it was a big mess. And he saw people, terrorists on the kibbutz. He ran, he didn't know what to do. He didn't have equipment with him in his, his gun. He didn't have anything. So he, ran, he went to the gate of the kibbutz, went up to the soldiers and said to them, I have the WhatsApp group chat. I know where everyone is and everyone's writing. Please come help us. We're in this house, in this shelter, in this... So the soldiers just threw on the gear on him, gave him the gun, a helmet and a vest. And he just navigated through the kibbutz under heavy gunfire. People were killed there. Hundreds of people were killed there. And he just joined the team. And 
found and saved many, many people. Now he has post-trauma himself. And, and he's now, a veteran. He's an Israeli, one of the soldier vet veterans. Yes, he has post-trauma. And now here he is. And now he has become a hero in the kibbutz, but that doesn't take away the trauma that he has. But at that moment, he just went and did what he needed to do for his people, for his kibbutz. There are, there are so many stories. And to tell you the truth, I'm actually shaking right now when I'm telling you this. So it's, it's, it's a little bit hard for me. Um, another story of, um, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, another story, um, someone who also has post-trauma because <laughs> what can we do? Everyone here has post-trauma from the past previous wars. He, um, was on the phone with his mother, telling her to hold onto the handle of the door because and the people held onto the handle of the, the shelter for hours. It, it, there's no lock in it because it's supposed to protect you from missiles, not from terrorists. So nobody was prepared to lock the door. So they, people were holding on the door for hours, one hand on the on the handle of the door of this of this um, shelter, and another hand with a gun because they were just waiting. I mean, this, they were knocking on the door, speaking in Arabic, and people just had to do everything they can and put aside the trauma and take care of the trauma after. And now, after, God willing, when this war will be over soon, I hope, um, we will have a lot of work to do with all these people that are suffering, have suffered before, and now for sure will have suffered will be suffering again with post-trauma, so. Right, and, and so that, that's the point, uh, Israel heart to heart, getting back on its mission. Um, there's so much trauma there. Uh, we're trying to do what we can, um, helping the families, you know, directly. Um, many of them need um, all kinds of therapist, therapy, and we're helping with that, helping them connect this one, that one. Um, and so, um, for anybody that, you know, so I personally, my wife and I adopted a family. It took about two seconds and I already funded some of the supplies and this and that. But, you know, you know, we, we look at where we are in life today. And if you have a million dollars or two million dollars in a pension plan and and you're living your life. And then I say to myself, well, this family lost everything. Um, and so I do it. It doesn't matter uh, as, as a Jew, as somebody who's been to Israel many, many times. It's just, that's what we're here for. We have to protect Israel at all costs today. And, uh, and that's why we're here. So, um, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be $5,000. I'm not saying that any, any amount helps. Um, if you do decide to adopt a family for $5,000, you will get the name of the family, the profile, what happened to them. Obviously, Things are very, very sensitive um, over there. So I, I received a family, my family's profile. Um, it's a husband, wife, three kids, and they, they, they literally suffered. So in their, in their shelter, in the, in the house, in the bomb shelter, in the house, they started shooting and, and they're throwing gas and they finally gave up and went to another house. And, but at that point they had to escape. They survived, but they, their house was blown up and lost all, everything um, on the kibbutz. And so, um, you know, we just uh, want to see how how we as a community uh, can help. Um, I'm going to share, but again, it doesn't matter. Um, many people, you know, whether it's $500, $50, it really doesn't matter. Our website is israelhearttoheart.org. And if you go over here to support Israel, I'm just going to share, and we're available for anybody who wants to learn more, uh, get a copy of this recording, or what have you. Uh, there's through there's different ways of of, uh, of donating and helping, and this and that. When it comes to the adopt a family, we're hoping it's not going to be automatic, and every family, every case is different. Um, uh, you know, we are giving the family the email address of each donor family that was uh, adopted them and we're hoping that they'll reach out right now they're still grieving they're in mourning they're saying Kaddish 
Um, you know, th there's so many funerals uh, going on at, at the same time of the war, and they don't really talk about that. So we have to be ultra sensitive, and that's not why we're giving to to get anything back, at least for for, for us. Um, and hopefully one day they'll reach out to me, my adopted family, and the hope would be that I could communicate back to them. And you know, we go to Israel once a year, and um, and hopefully a, a relationship begins. Um, this is this donate page for adopt a family, and obviously we blur it out some of those and any amount you put it in whatever um if you're going to do a credit card and you'd like to cover obviously the transaction fee we want more of the money going all the money going to the uh to the uh families um if you want to leave a comment in here about this the group that you're through so it can be identified but it's uh it's very simple so um that's all we have Oren. if there's anything else I just uh, want to say. I just want to say one. I just want to end one. I please. want to just say something, please. Um, it, it hurts me so to see that we're coming from a place. Israelis are coming again. I'll say this again: coming from a place to to ask for money, and that's not the case. I want everyone to know that Israel is the strongest country in the world. The people here are the most resilient. Everyone is in this war together. Mothers, parents, grandparents. Everyone is helping each other. We are. We're going to win this war. I, I meet people every day. I meet the soldiers when I'm feeling down and crying and scared, scared, really scared. I I, I, I meet someone on the street, someone who just came from reserved and, reserves, and I grab them. I'm like, tell me what's going on. Just tell me that. And they give us so much tr strength, so much pride. And that's who we are. We have to be together. And at this time, all, Jews all over the world have to stick together because the, the war is 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 everywhere, not only in Israel. Here we are protecting the Jewish home for all of the people who come here to visit. When they come here to Tel Aviv on the beaches, at the pubs and the restaurants, you all need to know that you can only do that because of our soldiers, always. When there's no war here, we never blink an eye. Unfortunately, on, on October 7th, something went wrong. We'll figure that out later, but right now we are defeating the enemy, and we, we will win this war. We are here, we are strong, we are Israel. I'm Israel Chai. I'm Israel Chai. Thank you, uh, Orly. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us, and Eric, uh, to explain to us the program. Um, in the comment section, I know there's a lot of different groups on here. Um, in the comment section, you can put the name of your group so you can pull your uh, donations together if you choose to donate. Um, so this way, Eric, behind the scenes, can aggregate that money to go to a family. So this way, as a, a group community, you'll have a family that will be uh, adopted, sent to you. Um, and, and this way you can, you know, do letter writing campaigns, videos of support, whatever you can do uh, to show these families how much we care and, and support them um, in any way we can. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. So I want to thank everybody uh, for being on here. If there's any questions, um, I think we have a few more minutes. Uh, if anybody would like to, you know, ask a question to, to Orly or to Eric, um, I think we can help facilitate that. All right. Okay, well, if there's no questions. We really, really appreciate everybody's time. Hi, one second. Oh, sure. Sorry, I'm sure you can't see me because I'm like out and about. It's Rabbi Fruit Handler. You're, uh, I'm the rabbi of the synagogue. I just wanted to thank you guys so much for doing this presentation, for being on the front lines. Orly, the image of you creating your own war room just to like take care of those who need it will be staying with me uh, for a long time. And I hope that we as a community can come up and... Uh, and show up with uh, our pocketbooks and our hearts and souls to uh, help you guys out. Thank you so much for giving us the path. Thank you. Thank you. And if anybody has any other groups um, that you want to reach out to, this is how we're doing it. Grassroots. Um, we have other people on this Zoom from different states out west and whatnot. Um, and if anybody else wants us to do this and come together, we're more than happy, you know, that's boots on the ground in the US, 
for the boots on the ground in Israel. And um, again, thank you all for, for attending the Woodbury Jewish WJ Cares event. And uh, again, if you want to pool funds, whether it's through Woodbury Jewish, the members of that temple, or others, or other groups, I know there's other, other groups here, just put it in the comment section, which group you're a part of. And Eric, behind the scenes, will aggregate that money. And uh, as a group, you can adopt a family. And, and also, or, in, you know, I don't, if, if, if you can't put a group together, that's fine too. Um, you know, we don't want to just limit it to $5,000. If somebody wants to lim give $500 to help the cause, we'll pull it together on our end as well. Exactly. And uh, there'll be connections made. Um, and I know everyone here probably has had on some level a connection to Israel. I myself has, you know, very deep, strong connections to Israel. Um, so hopefully this was informative and gives everyone here a way to support Israel, our brothers and sisters in Israel, uh, and the families that have been so deeply affected uh, for this horrible day on October 7th. Thank you, everybody. Orly, Eric, Oren, Brian, Rabbi, thank you. And we will put the information up on our website. We will see if we can get a hold of the video as well. I would like to be able to share that on our website and we'll put the link um, to where people can donate and we'll keep the initiative going. And if you have any questions, you can email um, uh, WJC Cares at, um, at woodburyjc.org and feel free to ask any questions. You can give the office a call if you have any questions and certainly you could reach out to Warren Gold uh, myself, Adrian Roth, Brian Rahani, and to Eric, and we're happy to help you. And Orly, we are all praying for you and your family and, and, and your neighbors and relatives. And um, thank you for being as strong as you are. For having me. Okay. Thank Am Israel, you. hi. Am Israel, hi. Am Israel.